Praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome to the Sunrise with Jesus. Friends, there is a rule for miracles and we see Jesus mentioning this more than a couple of times during certain healing episodes. Jesus says, according to what you believe is what shall be done to you. What shall be done to you? What happens in your life depends on what you believe. Friends, what we believe is what we are making a space for in our lives. And what we make a space for in our lives is what will come to occupy our lives. Suppose you are living under the belief, under strong conviction that life is unfair. And that is a primary rule that you experience in your life. You are making a space for unfairness in your life. You will come to experience that unfairness is truly the rule that governs your life. But if you choose to believe that God is over all other rules and God will have his way and God is so good and so generous, you will experience the things that happen to you are so good beyond your asking and your imagination. Friends, the reason for much of our sadness is the confusion that we all live under. While we have a goal, a goal that we want to be happy, we want our lives to be filled. We are looking for satisfaction. We invariably make choices for discontent. We make choices that are in total contradiction to our goals. Let's look at a few examples. For instance, there is this little child who goes with a parent shopping. And the parent presents before this child two little dolls and tells the child you can choose one. Well, one doll is pretty. It's got this beautiful flowing white dress. And the other doll does not have a very pretty dress, but if you press a button, it makes a certain noise. If you move it, its eyes will close and open. And this child is thinking hard which doll to choose. And finally, it chooses the doll that makes the noise and that closes its eyes and blinks about? Well, after making the purchase all the way home, the child was thinking about the pretty doll with the pretty dress which it left behind. And it was not able to rejoice over the gift that it had got. I have a friend, well, she spends considerable amount of time shopping. In fact, much of her time spent in shopping is spent in choosing. So she goes and spends hours in a shoe shop and almost an hour choosing between two shoes. And finally, when she makes her purchase, she takes a photograph of the shoe that she did not choose and she posts it on social media, the shoe that was not bought. Well, we have come across persons who make a choice for a spouse and who live the rest of their lives wondering whether they should have chosen some of the other people who came their way. Well, friends, we see that even for those who had the freedom to make a choice, there is always the temptation of discontent. And then there are so many of us who could be in situations who could be handed down deals that we clearly did not make a choice for. For instance, we think right from childhood, the little child who during the Christmas gifting is more impressed with what her sibling gets or his sibling gets. And right up to the point where you become an adult and when you look at your platter of life, you find that there is nothing interesting enough for you and you are grudging what your neighbor has in his or her platter of life. Friends, when we look at this continued discontent, 
that dominates our understanding of all that we are. Today, you could be discontented with your appearance. You could be discontented with the people in your life. You could be discontented with the opportunities that were allowed to you. You could be discontented with the successes you were given. Well, friends, when we look at this, this plague of discontent that is there in our society and in each one of us, we must realize discontent is the sure ingredient of anyone who has become a failure in life. Friends, why is discontent dangerous? For one thing is you lose the talent that is yours. You lose the joy of what you have and who you are. We remember that child who could not rejoice, who could not celebrate the gift she had because she was only thinking of what she did not have. Secondly, discontent becomes like a cancer transforming us into toxic persons. When we are discontented, we are sad. When we are so sad and this sadness is coupled with discontent, we slip into being sarcastic and toxic people who live with an exaggerated victim complex throughout our lives. And finally, because of our discontent and our failure to cherish and play the role that we have been assigned to in our life, a lot of good does not happen. Friends, we have been sent into the world with a mission, with a certain great quantity of good and a certain indispensable role where we are. And when we despise what we are, when we despise what we have, we neglect what we are meant to do and we fail to do the good that we do. And St. Paul highlights this beautifully in the letter that he writes to the Corinthians. The first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 10. And he is talking about how we all are one body, though we are different parts of it. Every one of us have a unique function and a unique role. And the person who begins to look at others and grudge what others have, discontented and devaluing oneself, is a person who can lead to the ruination of the body. Let's listen to this passage in the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians chapter 12 verses 14 onwards. He says, Now the body is not a single part but many. If a foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. Or if a ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It does not for this reason belong any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor the head to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary. And those parts of the body that are considered less honorable, we surround with greater honor. Friends, from here we understand that every one of us have a very great value. And though we do not like to mention this as a rule, the fact is we have been placed in such a way by God that we are indispensable. The talent we have is most precious. What we can offer to one another is most crucial. And so today we're going to look at five ways in which we can move from being discontented to living out our precious role in this world. And the first is to recognize that Jesus alone gives us satisfaction. Friends, a person who has everything in life, the biggest house, the best spouse, beautiful children, 
all the great luxuries of life will still feel the pain of dissatisfaction. And that is why we realize when we have Jesus, we are able to experience that fullness coming into our hearts. When I know Jesus is in charge of my life, when I have a relationship with God, when I am able to hear my God with the ears of my heart, I realize who I am. I realize what is my vocation. And then I realize I no longer need to look at someone else and compare myself. It is when we look at Jesus that we would be free from the bondage of comparison. And comparison leads us to discontent. Secondly, we must recognize that whoever we are, whatever our appearances may be, whatever our talents and our roles may be, there will always be people who scoff at us, who devalue us. But we must ensure we are not among them. Not one of us should ever look down on ourselves. You should not look down at yourself because of your complexion or your features or your height or your talents or your little challenges or even what job you are doing. Whatever you are doing, wherever you are, with whomever you've been placed in life, let us know you need to be able to treat yourself with that honor and that dignity and that joy of being the special person God has created you to be. And from here we go to the third point and that is seek to know your unique vocation. Seek to discover your unique value. Discover the mystery that you are and friends, it is only when you go to God that you will recognize that because God knows how precious you are. It is when we wait in prayer that we will realize how precious, how blessed each of us is. And from here we see the fourth exercise we need to take up is to offer thanksgiving. Be grateful for who you are, for who you have in your life and for what you are doing. And all that is a part of the person that is you. Friends, generously, constantly give praise and thanksgiving to God for the gift of you. And finally, pursue love. Seek to offer yourself in service to the others. Friends, the one key to sadness is to seek our own good. And the one key to joy and the fullness of life is to seek to make the lives of those around us richer, more tolerable and better. It is when we surrender, we dedicate our lives, our talents and all that we are to be a blessing to others. It is then that we truly come to that place where we are contented with life with God, with the world, and with ourselves. My dear sisters and brothers, even at the face of impossible situations in life, even at the face of tragedies, even when everything looks dark, even when everything looks impossible, you and I shall know God is there. I am the way, Jesus said. I am the way. At every moment when we understand we are stuck, the way is closed. The Lord is standing before us to tell us, I am the way. I am the way. And I take him as my way. I abandon my life to him. I remember a couple came here and they were very sad. They said they had no child. And they went to a doctor and the doctor suggested that 
they should go for a test tube baby. They asked me, Father, what shall we do? The sperm of the husband is not good enough. And the doctor suggested they could try a donor sperm, sperm of some other man. And the woman was in tears, the man was in tears. And I said, Father, we need a child. We need a child, even if it is of another man. We need a child. I told them, my sister, my brother, I understand your desire, a desire of any couple. Now you are going to conceive a baby and that baby will not be your baby. And you're doing it in a way that God does not want. A baby must be born not in the test tube, but out of love. And if a baby will not be born, the way God wants a baby to be born, why should that baby be born at all? The church does not allow such scientific methods, wrong scientific methods. Explain to them everything, the teaching of the church, the teaching of the Bible. And this woman was in tears. Later she told me, Father, if God does not want a child for us, neither do I want a child. What's important is to do God's will. God's will is more important than a child. And she made the decision. She canceled her appointment with the doctor. You know, today there are any amount of doctors doing this. She said, no, if God does not want to give me a child, I don't want to take that child from the hands of a doctor. No, life is to be given by God. But God does not give me. I do not want to stand before a man to take. No. And they adopted a child. And today, they're a wonderful family. And they're living a happy life, witnessing to God's salvation. Hallelujah. 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 My dear sisters and brothers, this day, we need to learn this lesson. Never doubt God's love. Never doubt God's plan. Never question God's commandments. The one thing, the basis of our life is God. If God created me, if God sent me into this world, God has got a plan for me. For my good future, for my prosperity, I accept God's plan. I obey God's word. And I believe God's word is the best option. God's plan is for my salvation, for my good future, for my prosperity. That is a surrender that Mother Mary made. That is a surrender that made her blessed. She became the ninth beatitude in the Gospels. Blessed are you because you believed. And every one of us, we are to become beatitudes. Believing in God, trusting in God's love and determined to obey God's will at every moment of our life. Amen.
Welcome and praise the Lord, dear brothers and sisters, into the presence of the Lord. This song always takes me to Isaiah chapter 6. It's the year King Uzziah had died, and Israel was without a king, and there was great mourning in the nation. And Isaiah goes into the sanctuary of God to mourn the loss of a king. But to his amazement, he sees that the Lord is king of Israel. And that beautiful vision and description of the presence of the Lord goes from there, where he says that the seraphims and how they worship the Lord in reverence and awe, and that the threshold shuddered because the Lord was pacing up and down with his long trail. And everyone was crying out, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. 
And then Isaiah realizes what a sinful man he is and he says to the Lord, take the amber from the altar, Lord, and cleanse my lips. That is what the presence of the Lord does to us. And so often, we don't realize whose presence we're in. We're so used to the Lord in the monstrance and often forget the majesty and the beauty and the glory of the Lord who is here. So this morning, we're singing, open the eyes of our hearts, Lord, to come to be in awe of his presence and love once again. So let's just sing that rephrase, holy, 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 with all the saints, with our lady, and with the angels, as it perpetually happens in heaven, as they join us here right now. Holy, 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 holy. Today the Lord speaks to us from Isaiah 41, a very familiar, often quoted scripture. But every time it comes with the power of God, because they're his words, heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never fail. And he says to us, do not fear. I am with you. Do not be anxious. I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. And I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Hallelujah. So this is what the Lord wants to deposit in our hearts and over our minds today. Do not be fear. Do not be anxious about anything. But that we are invited to know that He will strengthen us and He will help us and He will uphold us. So if you are feeling wronged or if you are feeling that nobody hears you, nobody listens to you, if you are someone who is lonely, someone who is going through great anxiety or depression, the Lord is telling you right now that you're not alone, that you are his chosen one, that you are his beloved, that we are clothed in dignity and honor, and that he sings the melody as he promises in Zephaniah 3, 17, it says, the Lord is a mighty warrior and he is in our midst and he sings over us with songs of gladness, he says, with songs of gladness as in the days of festivities. So come, come this morning to the banquet of the love of the Lord and receive your strength, receive your healing, receive your purpose from him. Of 
of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into a family. Your blood flows through my ways. I'm no Let's all just bow down and receive the Lord's blessing and receive the Lord's strength, His power, His anointing right now. You split the sea so I can walk right through. You rescued me and I will stand and see I'm a child of God You split the sea so I can walk right through it My fears are drowned in perfect love You rescued me and I will stand A child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving. Be every, every moment, moment thine. thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving, be every moment thine. O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving, be every moment thine. The Ministry of the Divine Retreat Center needs your support as they continue in their commitment to preach the good news of Jesus through the weekly retreats, the daily online and television ministry, through the service of 3,000 disadvantaged persons, the mentally challenged, the aged, the destitute women, the sick and abandoned and economically disadvantaged families. If you are inspired to share in this ministry through the sacred service of almsgiving, we invite you to send your love offering to Divine Charitable Trust, CD account number 0402231. 0000014 HDFC Bank Chalakudi Branch IFSC Code HDFC 
zero 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 four zero two and email the details to divine retreat center at gmail dot com.